Yesterday, we had to get out of the house. So we decided to go to the Tattered Flag Stillworks and Brewery. And I have a story for you. You will not believe what I found out from this place. I'm gonna walk in now. And this is gonna be so much fun. Keep watching. I'm Justin, we're here at, at Tattered Flag with uh, Alyssa, and she wanted to check some things out and share some things with you all. Um, I am the head brewer here, and a little bit about our story and what we do. We're a veteran-owned brewery and distillery. Uh, so. So Justin, I have one more question. What is the history of this building? It's a pretty big building. You have a, it looks like you have a ground floor, uh, you have your end, uh, main floor, and then you have an upper floor where you have your restaurant. What What is the history of this building? Uh, we, it, it is a huge building. Um, there's a whole labyrinth underneath here that I take people down sometimes and they're like, can't believe how big it is out here. Um, but yeah, you know, we obviously, as you saw, we have our dining area upstairs. The ground floor here we used to have a bar on the other side of the wall here. Uh, we've kind of dissolved that because of COVID, um, because we had to have to have additional staff operate that bar. It was more of like a quiet cocktail lounge, somewhere you can uh, you know, have a business meeting versus a more sociable atmosphere upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have our offices and some storage space over here. This building, the history of the building it was uh, the. Uh, the Elks Lodge, um, and you know the Elks was uh, a private club. Um, they handle things like charities and, and, and organize um, different ways to support their community. Um, mm -hmm. And then actually next door, they actually owned a movie theater as well. Uh, is it still there? Cool. It is still there, but it's been vacant. If okay. Not abandoned for, oh, for that's a years. Sh that's a shame. Um, it's a single. It's a, literally a single theater. They played one movie at a time. I think it was last operating in like '06 or '08ish. Okay. Um, but uh, it's a really cool, interesting place. It has a lot of history. Not that I know the full history of it, but uh, they. I think not, right now it's for sale. I think uh, a small group of individuals are trying to raise money to. To restore it, but uh, it really mm -hmm. needs a lot of love. Um, so we might end up, if we get it, we we'll probably use it for warehouse space as much as we'd love to do something with it. it just doesn't make financial sense. Um, or we'd love to see somebody come in and, and rehab the theater. That would be great for the, the town, the community, something to do. It's kind of like a little small town vibe. Um, you know, they can play one or two movies, right? Like Drive-in style, you know. Right. They come in, pay pay one room and watch two movies or something like that. Right, right. So. Yeah, I've been to those theaters and they're a lot of fun, but unfortunately they're starting to uh, not make it and a yeah. lot of people are working to bring those back, bring, you know, their town back. Yep, that's, you know, it's, COVID's really caused a, a, a strain. I mean, it's no secret on, on any small business or, or industry. Uh, you know, you'll see some things totally dissolve uh, and just kind of unfortunate but it is what it is our industry was one of the, probably the fastest growing in, in um, probably since 2016 or 17 I don't know the actual statistics but I know that mm -hmm. you know, breweries are popping up in every small town that just an insane number um, and then COVID hit and I've seen a variety of breweries close down in the past year right um, you know they were they weren't poised for the the curve, the, the plateau, instead of the, the upward, upward climb and the boom. Right, the and of it. you um, said there's this building was an elk lodge, or an elks. Elks lodge. Elks yep. elks lodge. Okay. Yep, elks lodge was upstairs, and then elks theater was behind us. Okay. And then um, downstairs here was, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it was just shared co-op space for small businesses. Uh, I think there was a flower shop here. Okay. Um, hardware store maybe um, thing, things like that you know, okay little 
maybe a little flurry grocery store at one point. Right, right. I'm not entirely sure. So over the years, just slowly yep. changed. and. Yep. But, wow, that's really cool. This building is humongous. And if you do visit, definitely uh, get a chance to walk the building. I'm going to show you upstairs as well. But uh, they, give, they give you a walk-up view of the brewery. So definitely take advantage of that. Of just Oh, and it smells fantastic. It smells so good in here. You'll definitely get some cravings if you when you t take a step in. Well, thank you so much. This was this is great to learn. I, I appreciate it, and really gets you excited to you know go to the mom and pop shops just like this one. So definitely support the local is my favorite thing. Sounds great, Eddie. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So, um, is there anywhere anything else you know to running a brewery? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I could go on forever, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, if you want to give you a quick tour, I'm actually just waiting for uh, my work to chill. Um, the case there, uh, we'll, we'll get down to the lower temperatures, so we can add hops, add what we call the cold side of the boil. Okay. Um, it's really popular in the New England style IPAs, which, like I said earlier, is, that's what I'm making. Ooh. Uh, so as that cools, I mean, I'm really just sitting here watching, I can show you around if you like. Sure, I would love to, you know, sure. learn more, see more. Start down here. Are these all kegs? These are. Oh my goodness, so, look at all these. This is our keg washing room. This is the machine that cleans them. Um, and then these are all clean kegs ready for beer. Um, as we mentioned earlier, I do can a lot of my beer, especially in the, the current climate with you know, a lot of people staying home. Um, it's preferential to package beer in cans and either ship them out or have people come and pick them up here at the brewery versus having a draft in the tap room, uh, where again, you know, we, we've just faced a number of ordinances that uh, where the governor would or would not allow certain uh, volumes in the tap room. So. When we were down to very low capacities, we decided that, you know, less beer goes in kegs, which means that we kind of got a stockpile here right now. Wow. Now that we don't have a lot of kegs, you'll see here shortly, I'll take a peek in our cold room and you can see how packed that is for the beer. Um, but yeah, we can cut on now. Wow, and I can see, you know, the, the original stonework in the basement. Oh yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, there's the original, uh, I mean, that's actually the dividing wall. Uh, don't mind, these are all dirty kegs here. Uh, this is just what came down from the weekend. Um, so, not a bad Friday and Saturday before the snowstorm. Um, yeah, that's an original wall we did build. This is a hand dug elevator pit that they built. Uh, and literally made some of their, their high school friends and their new employees get down here with shovels and dig this pit out. So wow! Of it's pretty wild. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have any part to do with that. Yeah, definitely tag your website in it. <laughs> Let's uh, see. These are just some of the small tanks for experimental styles. And uh, you know, when, I empty, when I empty out barrels that have been aging beer for six to 12 months, uh, I empty them into the small tanks. And then we'll actually bottle. We'll set up an assembly line right here and, uh, and bottle. Package up here in bottles, 500 million bottles, 500 million child. So, um, take a peek in here. This is actually our shipping station, kind of. <laughs> so we ship statewide. Oh, with all the boxes. Yep. So we have uh, custom-made boxes uh, stamped for our supply drop. Um, they package. They'll either hold three, four packs, or there's larger boxes that hold a whole case. Uh, they hold them in there really snug so the beer doesn't get uh, tossed around by the, the handlers. Um, everything makes it to your door as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, typically still cold and ready to enjoy. Wow. Uh, this is our cold room. This is storage. Wow, the cold room is right. This is freezing. <laughs> <laughs> so cold. Uh, so here's a variety of our cans that we have available upstairs. This is where they're stored. And then uh, they'll, the staff, bar staff will sign them out. 
can take them up, get them in the coolers, and off they go to the consumer. I love the um, the cans themselves have a lot of artwork on them. Is it a is it a local artist or? Uh, it's not. That's actually something I was just doing uh, before we started our video. Um, I use a website called Fiverr. Not to plug them, but uh, they become very popular with their ads in, in things like YouTube or any videos you might be watching on social media. Um, what they do is they contract out artists uh, that do all sorts of things from all over the world. They'll do voiceovers, you can have videographers, uh, illustrators, graphic designers. Um, so I will literally message a guy and say, uh, actually, here's one that's an example. Uh, Millennial Snow Day, and so I came up with the concept for this beer because, I mean, I'm only 32, and I remember when we got bad snow, school's closed. Mm -hmm. Well, now right. all the kids have to sit in the classroom at home, and oh. the parents get to go outside and play. So, oh, no! <laughs> so I asked an illustrator to, to depict, like, a, a child, and say, make him a hop character because it's beer. Um, and outside, look, see the parents playing in the snow while the kid has to sit in, in school. Oh. Uh, because that's how it is now. The parents have to take off work to, to watch their kid at home. And, uh... I would want that can just to, like, <laughs> decor for what's been happening. Yeah. So oh I'll just, God. uh... I'll communicate that to an illustrator online. And I think she, this specific one, is in, uh, either a Middle Eastern or Western Asian country. And, um... She takes forever to get back to me, but she did a fantastic job, so I was happy with it. Wow. Um, I have I have one from Argentina that I really like to use. Um, we use people from all over the world to say, hey, here's what I'm thinking. Um, a lot of these beers actually are not ours. They're from our Hershey location, where we... Uh, our Hershey location is actually an extension of our distillery license. Uh-huh. So we carry our beer in addition to a variety of other local Pennsylvania breweries that are really popular. So some, a lot of these guys are from other local and regional breweries that, that we're fond of. So we carry a variety of beer because that location is meant to actually focus on our spirits. Um, so we kind of showcase a variety of beer to kind of d detach people from the fact that it's not a brewery a little bit. Wow. And give them not only our own stuff but some other other examples to try while they're traveling through the Hershey area. Very cool, very cool. Out of here I know it's cold in here. Right, I'm sorry, my teeth are starting to chatter a little, so let's go into the next location. Just watch your step here, it's a little wet. I just took some uh, grain out, um, taking it upstairs in trash cans, uh, like these, these big guys here. I'll fill up trash cans with grain and then take them outside and the farmer comes and collects them for their cattle. Oh wow, that's, that's cool. Um, but I'm on the back half of brewing the beer here, so um, this is a little wet, slippery, just watch the step, like I said, but we've already gone through the mash, uh, which is where our grain goes in. Uh, we already finished our boil process, and now we're on our whirlpool where we're lowering our temperature to add some hops. Wow. This is so cool. Now, being on the floor, you see how much is actually fitting all in here. <laughs> This is so cool. What a cool opportunity. Now I see, is that a battle axe? What is that? <laughs> it is. <laughs> yep, this is a battle axe that somebody made us. So uh, it's meant to be a mash paddle. We don't really use it for that because we don't want to break it, mash paddle. Uh, so I would go up in the top there and if there's like clumps of dried green, um, you would just kind of stir it in. So that's the purpose of this, but again, it's really cool. Um, they wrote in, uh, I don't know if this is Gaelic, uh, but it's like a, a traditional like Viking wow. um, characters, I guess. Uh, but it says tattered flag. And then we've got the, the you know, they stenciled in the flags there. But yeah, this is all handmade. What a fun gift. We had you two know. of them, but we broke one. Oh. Which is why we don't use this one to match. It kind of just hangs around and people always ask about it. I tell you what, one gift that says a lot is is the best gifts you can give. Oh yeah. That was so. really cool. We were happy to have that. 
so cool. Yeah, I would never touch that. That is definitely <laughs> would just be my decor. Yeah, it's it's great <laughs> for photo ops. Um, in the industry, we do a lot of collabs, which is where we'll work with another brewery. Um, you know, we'll go back and forth through email or text or, or you know, however well we know each other, and we'll talk about making a beer together, and then we'll meet up at one of the two breweries and actually brew it. And anytime we do that here, they're always a grab. They always come grab the axe for pictures <laughs> for our social media accounts. It so. it makes it all the more fun. This is so cool. Thank you. Absolutely. I do the kind of get the height. I didn't really do that, but... <laughs>